Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. Father, there are seven things the Bible says that you must not be ignorant of in this life. When you walk with God, you study him, you find out what he hates is not what man hates. What he loves is not what man loves. Actually, they contradict. They big no ignorant of spiritual gifts. That's 1 Corinthians 12. In 2nd or 3rd Peter, 2nd Peter, sorry. He said, be no ignorant of this for a day with the Lord is like a thousand years, so don't run. Beyond your ability. Calm down. We will get the job done. God. It is man that says that you enter menopause at 45. God has no menopause. God has no time counting. You can give birth at any age. Say you want to raise them at youth. There is no guarantee. If you give birth at 20 that they will end up well in life. The guarantee is that God... We we'll raise, they said, and our children shall be taught of the Lord. It's God that gives that guarantee. There's no guarantee that they will outlive you. It's God that gives that guarantee that they will outlive you in age and time. <laughs> they don't be ignorant of that, so you be careful where you're running. Yes, you're in a race, but careful how you run. So don't be ignorant of it. So don't be ignorant of the devices of Satan, which is what we're looking at. That's 2 Corinthians 2.11. So don't be ignorant of something in Romans 11. That's serious. Say so you were not originally called. It was the Jews that owned this call. You were not in consideration. Say, so do you know why they were removed? Unbelief. Say, so God removed them because of what? Unbelief. And grafted you in. A stranger removed his own children. He said, if he removed his children because of unbelief, then you are now walking in unbelief. <laughs> he said, it won't take time for God to remove you. He said, don't be ignorant of this, that they were removed and rejected because of unbelief, which is all Satan is after. All the things you are facing is to generate what? Unbelief, that's all. Abraham, the pressure you are facing is to get you to be unbelieving. That's why God says, Abraham, walk before me and be perfect. Stop going right and left. For once, be straight. In Matthew 6, from verse 22, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye be single, your whole body shall be full of light. He says, arise, shine, for your light is come. It's not enough that the light comes. You must maintain the intensity of that light. And the light must be shining. Matthew 25, he said, let your, the lamp be burning. Now, what Satan wants to do, he wants to extinguish the light. And Jesus said, if your eye be single, there will be light. If it's divided, it will be darkness. So Satan is bringing chaos to divide your mind. The case have no bearing on your purpose. It's a distraction to divide the mind and introduce darkness and overwhelm the person and take the word away. Said if your I be single, if you are focused, your whole body will be full of light. If, however, your eye be evil, meaning distracted. Then the whole body shall be full of darkness. So how is Satan going to introduce his darkness outside and your own light shining? He can't touch your light. It will burn him to ashes. So what does he do? He divides your focus with cares. The word care means to divide. Once he can divide your focus with cares, with time and pressure, and things 
and shoe and bag and gold. He will turn that light to darkness. And Isaiah 60 will no longer be applicable. And it no longer becomes a rash in it. For gross darkness has covered the people and the man that has the light. It's over. That journey has either truncated or has navigated into treacherous, treacherous storm for that man. And so there are certain things you need to tell yourself about cares, about pressure, when they come. The word care means pressure, anxiety, especially trying to match up to man's timing. That's why Abraham said, I am getting old. I am not getting any younger. The cares are coming. <laughs> Satan, oh, that guy is terrible. Go, Jesus. God built a magnificent being. I never heard Jesus call him, they called him a thief. They never called him a fool. Never. Jesus never called Satan a fool. In fact, the Bible calls him full of wisdom. Some of wisdom. He knows, and the Bible says he uses what? Devices. Not power, devices, tricks. I've seen somebody called in a meeting and said, 24 hours, the Lord will visit you. And your story will change. Driving on the way, they crashed into his car. He came down and fought. Satan said, thank you for the word you just gave me. And went. It was over. The word never came to pass. How did he say still the word with Real light. Crash into real light. Everybody say, I don't want to hear. You know where it is, God. I say, oh, the word is gone. It's gone. I said, I said, bye. It's gone. He just took it out right there. So the things you must know about cares. Number one, in that Matthew 6, if you go further down to verse let me back up to verse 25. Therefore, I say unto you, don't even take thought of your life itself. A disciple in John 20, 21, 20, John 21 asked the Lord, that's Peter, asked about John. He said, what about this disciple? What do we do with him? Just following us all over the place. The Lord said, if I would that he return, that he remains till I return, what is that to you? That means 2,000 years, if I want him to stay, you can't do anything about it. You can't do anything about it. So take no thought for your life. What you will eat, what you will drink, nor yet for your body, what you will put on. Life is more than food. Life is more than body. And life is more than clothing. Meaning life is more than your jewel. Life is more than your car. Life is more than your wardrobe. Life is more than everything you've got. You know, we're sharing. And I said one of the aspects of God that I have is the aspect of life that can eat death and live. If you have another aspect of God, and you have another aspect of God, and you manifest another aspect of God, and we're manifesting another aspect of God, we have entered into what we call rest. They will not be thinking of what we will eat and drink. And I understand why Jesus said, chase the kingdom. Because when you manifest that aspect of God, your life will go beyond what you will eat and drink. He says, look at the birds of the air. They don't sow. They don't reap. They don't save. And they are well fed. Yet, you have more value than all of them put together. So, your problem should not be food. Your problem should not be drink. Your problem should not be clothing. You shouldn't lose sleep over that. We're trying to find what can make you lose sleep. 
Which of you, by taking thought, can add one second to his lifespan? Then your problem shouldn't be long life. Why take thought for clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They don't work. They have no job. Yet Solomon in all his glory is not decorated like one of these. Now, if God clothes this grass today and tomorrow, men cut it and burn it off. That looks like a wasteful investment. Is it you he will not clothe who is both today and tomorrow? O ye of little faith. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and these things shall be yours. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow we take thought of the things of itself. Sufficient unto today is this evil thereof. Now, here he's talking about clothes. He's talking about food, drink. Now, to somebody here, it's not food, drink, or clothes that is the problem. To somebody here, it's rent. And he's thinking of rent. And God said, that rent you are thinking is dividing your focus. If you continue, darkness will encroach on you. And what I want to do in your life, I will not be able to do again. So what does Satan do? Satan, it's, it's 15 more days old. Your rent, 800,000. How much do you have in the account? 19,000 naira. And you have to pay 800,000. Where will you get 700? Hey! Hey! That's set. It's called curse. For another. That's what he said. He said he has never failed any man. He said, check my record. I've never failed a man. He said, I said, I will provide it. What I told you to do, do your part and leave my part to do. We can't do my part together. Oh, yeah. Kali, man, sekeli, batu, si, fredi, lima, sanga, hea, koshandi. You know what the devil now does? <laughs> That 19,000 <laughs> that you have kept small is going to take it out of your hand. And God will allow it. He may take it through sickness and they have to buy drugs and pills. And the hospital just say, all your bill is 18,500 or something. Say, yeah, the little money I'm saving. God, the hospital will take it. If the hospital doesn't take it, God can allow Satan himself to take it. Something happens, they say the car can't move. It's something you can manage. Say, no, you can't. If you move, it will knock. Yes. Or got mechanic plus part and labor. It's just 17,000. <laughs> and after you pay, say, 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 the little 20 you are saving is even gone. Where will you start from? It's a care. They take no thought of it. Don't consider it. Don't ignore that it's there. But it has no bearing on where God is taking you to. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Coyote Adishoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Suruleri Lagos. Get a copy today. So, deal with the cares by saying to yourself, if he can answer to the need of fowls and plants that today are and tomorrow are not. I, I, I think I shared this before. My rent was due, and I didn't have money to pay. And the landlady came with the brother. 
Bang, 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 bang. Ah, what's going on? Well, there's nothing much in there. I mean, some robbers. There's nothing to take. So I opened the door. There's no money, nothing. So they came in. Say, Pastor, you have not paid your rent. Why? Now, this is my brother. When are you going to pay your rent? Eh? It's taking too long. I went on and on. I just sat. I didn't even know what to say because there's no money. I'm not expecting any money. I don't know where money will come from. There's nothing I'm earning. Everything is just zero. So I said, oh, yeah, yeah, pastor, talk, 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 talk. Eh? Hey, do you have water in the house? Oh, yeah, bring water. Let's drink. <laughs> if it's where we're coming from, it's far. I said, ah, you will still drink. I praise God at least. Serve them water. So I said, before this time next week, that came from my spirit. I wasn't worried. If I was worried, that cannot come. If I was bothered, that cannot come. For that to come, I must have a clear mind trusting God. For Satan to stop it, I must be worried and filled with anxiety. Hey, hey, what will I do? Satan will cut that man off from that one week the pronouncement is supposed to make. If you are not worried, Satan cannot cut it off. So meaning I was not considering all the drama going on. I was trusting God, looking up to the Almighty, who feeds the birds, clothes the plants with a glory better than Solomon, knowing I'm far better than all the birds from creation to date. And I said, this time last week, before 12 noon, you will have your money. 12, if I, no, I, said, I said, 12 noon on the spot, you will have your money. I said, Pastor, let it be so. They drank their water and they were going. Looked at the house. I said, where are you are looking? You are using the house where? Not bad. <laughs> I said, I've seen today. Hey! Monday, no money. So there are two choices. Worry and be depressed. They will throw that man out. Which is what Satan wants. The rent is not the problem. God is going to step in. The reason God knows, Satan, he said, if any man finds himself in any crisis, James chapter 1, let him ask God for wisdom who give it liberally. Say, let him not doubt. Knowing that he that doubts is like a wave tossed to and fro. Let that man not think he will get anything from God. Now, Satan wants to stop God giving the man the rent. What's he going to do? He's going to make the man doubt. Because he knows God cannot violate his word. If you doubt, he won't give you. So he's going to bring the case. Then the man who has promised you money before just calls you. Say, uh, bro, how is he going? Well, that money won't come out again. No. It's good. That Satan is the It's not going to come out again. And you have to tell yourself, the money is not from this man, it's from God. Or the money is from this man, then you are depressed. If that fails, he will try another avenue. He will always, he will not, he doesn't, he has a character, he doesn't give up easily. Jesus said he's scarce, dividing. Once it's divided, God will not move. Let me make it clear. Once your mind is divided, God will not move. Once that focus is changed, is distracted, God will not move. And Satan knows. He can't stop the hand of God, but he can stop you from making sure that you stop the hand of God. And he's going to use those cares. Pressure! Pressure. Somebody will just come to visit you the next day. You know that our friend? You believe what happened? They threw his things on the road. People are just picking it like this. He said he was believing God. Ah, I don't know why Christians are so stupid. That's the first visit. You think the first visit you had someone that encouraged you? No. That's the first visit of the messenger of Satan. He's going to send them. When that one goes, I say, that says nothing is happening. And somebody you are owing some money will just come. If you don't pay my money today, Paul, look, I'm, they will lock you up. Now, the first thing you are running around is money to pay that person. You're not even thinking of rent. That you have how many days left? Five days left. And on Thursday, I faced God's work. That's what he told Abacock. Face what I gave you to do. The vision is what I gave you. Face it. Put your eyes on what I asked you to do. Leave the Chaldeans. Leave the rent. Leave everything. So I faced what God called me to do. I thought there I had a call. Um, is that Kyle? I said, yes. You got a pen? I said, yes. Say, so write this number down. It's a Western Union number. The God appeared to me and said to pay your rent. When I went to First Bank, not now you go to, you know, it's First Bank, we go to then. 
to collect the money. I got there seven. They opened eight. <laughs> I, the queue. I waited in front. My legs didn't ache me for one hour. So I can be number one. When I got in, they filled all my forms. They said, you have to wait. We're short of cash. The bullion van has gone to bring money. I waited till 11. No, till around 10. When they brought money, they gave it to me. I was driving to go and pay the landlord. When police stopped me that I took a wrong turn, I should park. I was there. I bet them, oh, they didn't answer. The distance from that place to the landlord's place is 15, 10 minutes. When it was 10 minutes to 12, the policeman said, young man, you can go. When I got there at 12, I said, what's all this for? He said, but you said 12. I told you before 12, you changed it to 12. And we have to hold on what you said. Was paid 12 on the dot. The man said, ah, pastor. <laughs> Your man said, I'm so bad, I'm so Meaning you said it, and we found it that way. There was no care in my heart. There was no worry in my heart. If there's no worry, he will do it. If there's worry, he will not do it. That meat, that food, and that drink means different things to different people. Some is a deal, a property you must sell. And that's your break. And you are worried. They say people are not buying property. <laughs> Angel will buy your own. Yeah. Don't be divided. So when you know that your very hairs are numbered, which I consider grossly unimportant and irrelevant, if that is how much of concern he has for me, then I don't think my rent is something he will look away from. Amen. He said, getting worried, crying, and getting stressed will never solve the problem. That's in Matthew 6, verse 27. Which of you by worrying, can add one second to his lifespan. That's what it says. The Bible says 70 years are the number of a man to live on the earth. Then he tells you how to lengthen it. He said, by wisdom, you can make it what? 80. He didn't say by worry. He said, you cannot add a second to your lifespan through worry. That means for that person... Life is his concern. He needs to live longer. He said, by worrying, you can't solve it. So tell yourself that this worry will not solve the problem. When you know, Satan cannot make you worried. Worrying has never solved any problem. For Samuel 30, the Bible says, David, you know the hypocrisy he did, following God, that I am with you, I will fight King Saul, pretending. By the time he came back, it's Ziegler. The Bible says his wife, his children, and the families of all his soldiers have been taken captive. When he came back, the Bible says David wept. Till there was no power to weep. Please, try one day to weep till you have no power to weep again. I don't know how a man can come to a point he has no power to weep. What kind of weeping has he been weeping? All the while he was weeping, no solution came. Why? Satan divided his mind. So God was looking at his wife and children in captive. Then for once he said to himself, what's my problem? Let me make my eyes single so that my body can be full of light. He said, arise, shine. This is darkness I am seeing. He didn't say I should look into the darkness. He said I should lift my head up. Say, Lord, what do I do? Ah, God said, pursue, overtake, and recover all. Did the answer come through crying? No. Don't let Satan make you cry. When you know this, he is finished. In the YouTube, you talk like Jesus. The God of this world, comment after me, but you find no landing strip. The plane just sacu sacu. There is no place to land and returns back to sender. And I understand why the message is coming. Don't complain in 2020. Don't complain. Provide the solution, which was what David did. Provide the solution. Oh, you are bringing the urine 
and tumbling. Oh, you are not kitty. Bang, bang, bang. What is he saying? Say, we could pursue any other thing. So, overtake any other thing. Recover your party. Let's go. <laughs> we shall pursue, overtake, and recover all. There is no crisis that doesn't have a solution. Not one in this life. The devil is a bastard. I, I don't like to use such words. Put Abraham under that pressure. Look at the pressure he puts her off. I say she saw that she was beginning to be no longer after the manner of women. Menopause. So what's the next? Is menopause he used for her? And she says, you have entered menopause. Have you seen anybody after menopause? None. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Before they drive you, I bring Hagar. God is kind and merciful to Abraham. That would have been the end of that vision in Abraham's life. It would have ended as Abraham in life, not Abraham. We would not have read him in history because of Hagar. Satan divided his mind straight. Put cares and pressure. You will make it. You will excel. Listen, what is that meat? What is that drink? What is that cloth in your life? Is it rent? Is it husband? Is it wife? Is it children? Is it job? Is it scholarship? Mention it. It will be metal. It will be metal. This 2020, it will be metal. I prophesy to your life. Before the due date of that meat, you see, we're using meat as a paraphrase of that pressing need in your life. Before the due date, meaning, you know, I gave, that, it, it happened before that time I gave to, before that day, that same God who has not changed, has not changed, He will meet that need. He will surpass that need in your life. In the name of Jesus. I believe you have been blessed by that message. And I know your faith has been built up. And I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it, and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again, same time next week, I want to tell you, don't give up. Faith works. It's working, and it will work in your life. God bless you.